My life started on an unknown day in an unknown month in spring of 2019. The sun was out, possibly. The birds were chirping, not sure if I actually care. And I was drowning in an indescribable apathy and emptiness that has defined the majority of my life. Ah, uh, high school. Let me preface by saying I love Shakespeare. It is both the best and worst parts of my personality, and while I pride myself on not being the sweater-wearing, book-back-holding Timothée Chalamet looking rich kid academic that I am still an arrogant snob when the moment possesses me because I believe I sometimes deserve the pettier things in life. But that is not the point. As stated previously, I do not know on what particular day my life started, only that it was between the hours of 7.30 and 2.19, and that while I was not present at the beginning of the universe at the moment I put on my clothes for the role, I felt my mind reset and my life clock began to take a new, moving faster, better, steadier this time. I should start from the beginning. It is my senior year of high school, and in between filling out college applications for schools I do not want to go to and arguing with my mother about a major I am not interested in, I am reading Hamlet. It is difficult to push my body to get out of bed, to go through the motions, to go to the school that I hate, and yet I take each step as my body remembers its muscle memories and walks me through the halls, my mind watering on autopilot because I have no reason to be there. And it's only when my English teacher, bless him in a god I do not even believe him, suggests that we make an adaptation of a scene of Hamlet not too long, not too short, that I break out of my self-imposed ice barrier of apathy and pay attention for the first time in years. And to my shock, when casting roles, I raise my hand. There are no strings, even though I look, no puppeteer controlling my marionette body. This is me, only me, and I think it is the first decision I have made in a lifetime. It's a man's role, too. Not that women were anything more than invisible objects meant to be used as playthings for men in the 16th century, but I am still shocked by myself and my lack of caring at playing a man's role, deviating from my practiced apathy. I am excited about this. I realized. It is an emotion so foreign. I believe it is a virus and I'm perturbed, but pleased and I cannot show my anxiety, my fear. I just want to smile and look the part because what other part is there for me to play? I go to Goodwill and I buy oversized pants and an oversized shirt and it is freeing to put them on at home. I do not bother looking in the mirror. I do not care what I see, but I am free. I am freer than I have ever been in these clothes. And I think it is the role that makes me so happy. The chance to be outgoing in a way I've never been before to take action for once in my life. It is fine. I am fine. I am fine as I am always fine until that day between seven and two where I put on the clothes, slick back my hair, and I look. I find mirrors to be a pain. They are liars, cheaters, purveyors of truth I do not care to see, but when I look in the mirror, I do not see me. To be exact, I do not see the me that was me, the she that is now dead and gone along with her life leading up to those 18 years and however many months. Instead, I see a he slash she or they slash she or he that slash they slash she or something other than all of these things who stares back at me, born and new, still young, still innocent, still naive, naive with none of the pain, suffering agony in her eyes, only a hardened steel veneer with softness lying underneath. And I stop and I stare. It is not the first time in my life that I do not know what to do because that is every waking moment that I panic about my lack of agency my lack of decision-making and ability to take action for once in my life. But it is the first time that I do not mind. It is the first time that I truly stop and stare and look at myself and I cannot help but laugh. I laugh and I laugh and I smile for the first time in years. It is a genuine smile for the first time in years and I'm elated and alive and it has never been better. It does not fade until I change the best of highs that an addicts dream about and chase, and I am craving that feeling still, that completeness, the puzzle pieces finally coming together, and the satisfaction. And with the satisfaction that I start the rest of my life. 
I change my pronouns, I change my clothes, and I can look in the mirror without walking away, and I am happy. I'm happy because I do not know why I am so happy or who I am or what I am, but for once in my life, it does not matter who or what or how I am because I can live as me, and that the head dead husk of the girl who wanted everything and got nothing. I mourn her that night as I change my pronouns on my social media, and I leave a flower for her and a kiss to remember her by. And I hope that in the midst of her ap apathy and her numbness that threatened to consume her every waking moment that she caught fought countless battles, bloody wars against no survivors, only a rising toll with each tick, that she knows I am happy and that she can lay down her weapons and finally rest. It's what she needs. Rest. So, rest in peace, me. 2001 to 2019.